Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and today we're going to talk about histoplasmosis. It is a lung infection caused by inhalation of histoplasma capsulatum spores. Those spores are naturally occurring in soil and droppings of birds and bats. Usually in healthy individuals the immune system can destroy the spores without any infection occurring. However, if the infection occurs, the symptoms are fever, cough, fatigue, chills, headache, chest pain and muscle aches. The diagnosis is by gold standard done by blood and urine samples where fungi grow in the culture to prove that there is an infection. Also to do an x-ray or a CT is possible. In an x-ray the infection will show as multiple nodules as in military tuberculosis. As both of them appear quite similar, it's not the gold standard uh, culture is usually used to exclude any other diseases. Now I want to talk about the pathophysiology. So once the spores are inhaled, in the lungs the histoplasma cells infect the host macrophages by binding to beta-2 integrins on the surface of the macrophage. There, the spores avoid phagocytosis by specific virulence factors, namely HSP60, which prevent the action of the innate immune system. Within the macrophage, they reproduce in the phagolysosome until they destroy the cell. In healthy individuals, the T cells activate the macrophages so that they can kill the pathogen. In immune compromised patients, this activation is inadequate and the fungi are more likely to disseminate. However, even if an immune activation occurred, not all histoplasma cells might be removed and the infection can become latent. The infection might disseminate to extrapulmonary sites as the mediastinum, the adrenal glands, liver or meninges. Now I want to talk about the histologic appearance. The spores lead to formation of epithelioid cell granulomas. Epithelioid cells are formed by the fusion of activated macrophages, which form cavities in the lung with the formation of coagulative necrotic lesions. Under treatment or self-limitation, the lesions become fibrotic, so they form scar tissue with concentric calcification. This appears like a bark of a tree. Visualization of the fungi is done by special staining with methanamine silver. There are also different forms of histoplasmosis. There is first of all the acute primary infection when the spores are inhaled for the first time and the immune system can fight the infection by itself. However, if not all cells are destroyed, this might lead to a latent infection. So the spores are present within the lung, but there is no active inflammation. So they are just residing within the macrophages and as soon as the immune system becomes weaker, a new infection, a secondary infection occurs. There's also the chronic infections or granulomas of whitish color are present in the apex of the lung and their dissemination to the pleura and regional lymph nodes might occur. First to the hilar lymph nodes and then to the mediastinal. Also there is further destruction of wider areas of the lung parenchyma by invasion to other lobes and formation of more granulomas. There is also the fulminant disseminated form. This is primarily in immune suppressed patients where quickly the whole lung is affected of focal collections of mononuclear phagocytes filled with a pathogen. These patients typically present with hepatosplenomegaly, lymph adenopathy, bone marrow involvement and GI ulcerations. If also the cerebrospinal fluid is involved, meningitis is seen frequently. Fibrosing mediastitis is often the cause of death. How is this infection treated? It depends on the severity of the infection and in acute primary infections treatment is often not necessary and is self-limiting. In light to middle severe infections, itraconazole is given to fight the fungi and in severe infections, amphotericin B is the treatment of choice. I hope everything was clear. If you have any questions, post it in the comments. I will try to answer as soon as possible. And if this video was helpful for you, I would be very happy if you would subscribe. Thank you very much.